Hey there, gamer. By now, you have to be noticing that your bit boy is getting a little long in the tooth. It has neither enough bits nor enough boys to make it as a great system anymore. Really? Yes, really. But now, there's something you can do about it. The new BitBoy! Now, with more bits and more boys! <laughs> it's kinda creepy. Thanks, new BitBoy! New BitBoy. It's Bitacular! What comes in a blue box and is better than a BitBoy? It's BitBoy 2 with Go Faster Racing Stripes. No, seriously guys, this is supposed to be quite a bit better than the original BitBoy, which I liked a lot when I covered it, if you recall. Anyway, uh, this runs Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and NES games, as opposed to the old BitBoy, which just ran NES games. Also, there is a TF card reader in here, unlike the old one. So hopefully this is going to be a pretty big improvement. Let's look at the box. This of course is the stylish front of the box. Here is the right side of the box. Neat. Here is the left side of the box. Kind of boring. Here is the top of the box. Bit boy. Everything old is retrolution. I don't know what that means. Like revolution? Retrolution? Hmm. The bottom of the box. Really unexciting. Supports external micro SD card. That's a big improvement over the old one, which did not. NES, Famicom, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy. Added two new abilities. That's Game Boy Color and Game Boy. Headphone jack. That's good. Saves games. Also good. 2.4 inch IPS screen, which was the big feature of the old BitBoy and is repeated here. Full screen original resolution display. Screen brightness adjustment, that's a plus. 700 milliamp rechargeable lithium battery. That's kind of a low amperage, but it'll play two to three hours according to this. Also has TV out, which we will be utilizing later. All right, let's open this up. Reveal your secrets to me. Ha ha. All right, what is inside the box? Nothing to see there. Alright, there's the BitBoy itself. One BitBoy instruction manual. Uh, which shows you the basic functions. How do I adjust the screen brightness? Select plus TB. Tuberculosis? Turbo button B. To save a game when playing the game. Short press right. Settings. Save. Short press A to save. Inside the box is, gasp, another box. Let's see, what have we here? All right, let's talk AV cables. Here we have the side that goes into the unit itself, and then we have a right, left channel, and of course, video out. Uh, note that there are two audio channels, but of course, uh, I know the Nest puts out just mono and I'm pretty sure that the Game Boy and the Game Boy Color both are mono as well. So you know it's not true stereo or anything but it is nice especially if your TV has multiple speakers then you're not just getting them out of one side. The cable itself is pretty decent quality it's kind of right in the middle it's rubbery as opposed to plasticky that's good that's better than most Famiclone cables and it's about six feet long. Next of course we have this little guy right here, a micro USB to USB adapter, which charges it, and it's pretty short. But, rubber quality feels pretty decent. And finally, we have the BitBoy 2. Let's take a look. Very nice. A, B. And X, Y, this is the turbo buttons for A and B. That looks like a reset button. Select, start. D-pad feels pretty decent. Does it have collapse syndrome? No, it does not. Hmm. Here's the right side of the unit. 
Here is the left side of the BitBoy. On the top we have a TF card reader and an on off switch. Looking at the bottom we have a micro USB jack and of course the AV port. Here's the back, you can access the battery by pulling on this. And there we go. No screw. Boy, I like them better without that screw in there. Here's a little closer look at the height of the D-pad and the buttons. They're pretty good. Buttons are a little bit small, uh, but that's to be expected on such a small unit. The buttons here for select and start are not rubberized. Neither is the reset. All right, so here's a look at the new BitBoy versus the original BitBoy. And as you can see, they are very, very similar using the same molds. Here's the new BitBoy next to the original Game Boy Pocket. It's much smaller. Here, you wanna see the sides? Thinner too. Here's not Mario holding the new BitBoy. They're gonna get sued. All right, so it's been a few days and I've got about 15 hours into this thing. And I think I know the device well enough to give you an impression of it. It's pretty darn nice. I don't have a lot of negatives about it. The couple nagging issues are uh, number one, uh, the A and B button are vertical instead of horizontal as I'd like them. I'd like this to be uh, A and B, not this kind of weird thing. I had that complaint about the last one too. I've seen a lot of devices coming out like that, so I don't know if that's like a new thing or not. Uh, the other thing I want to mention is there's significant light leak. If you look, I mean, it feels great. It feels nice and thick, but you can clearly see light coming out of both sides of the unit. So if light leak drives you nuts, this is going to drive you nuts. Uh, also, when it's really dark, there's a little bit of light leak coming out of the sides as well. Otherwise, it is really 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 cool uh one thing about it is unlike the last bit boy there are no built-in games at all you're going to bring your own roms to this one of the nice things is that it separates them for you so if you drop them all into into the root folder it's going to separate them into nes game boy and game boy color that is freaking cool as heck and i'll show you a little bit more about that later hitting this menu button will bring up a settings system and one thing I've found is that if a game runs a little bit slow, you can switch this from full mode to default mode and hit B here to get out. And it will turn it to its original format. That's also if it bothers you that they're a little bit stretched. They don't really look stretched to me, but they definitely are stretched. But if a game is running a little bit slow, I found that unstretching it does seem to correct the performance issues with it so very nice glad that they included that feature turn down the volume volume adjustment hit the select button and a to turn the volume down b turns the volume up if you would like to adjust the brightness of the screen it's too bright right now i can hit select and the turbo buttons to adjust it. Oh, much easier for you to see now. As far as volume goes, at the top of its range it does get pretty distorted. It's nice that they put the speaker in the front though so it makes it nice, loud, and clear. And the sound isn't bad at all in the middle range. Just when it gets really up it gets very distorted as you can hear here. I said hear, hear. <laughs> Retro Rob plays everything. Welcome to the main menu. As long as you have an SD card inside the unit and some games on it, you will get this menu. If you do not, it will display nothing but a blank screen. So you've been warned. Okay. We are on the NES page right now. I'm going to go over to the Game Boy page and I'm going to go to the Game Boy Color page. That represents the three types of games it runs, of course. Hitting A will go into a menu that shows you all the games that you have on your system for that given system. That made sense? Yes, I said system a little bit too much, but I think it made sense. Uh, scrolling through, you can see all the ROMs you have. It will automatically divide them up for you, so you don't have to worry about organizing it. It does all the organization. Unfortunately, 
it doesn't do a perfect job <laughs> of putting things in alphabetical order. Why? It'll separate the rhymes, but it won't put them in an alphabetical order? <sighs> I can't believe this still happens. But anyway, it's not terrible, just annoying. Um, as far as emulation goes, it does a pretty good job of emulating games. Uh, I've run into a few that didn't work, but to be honest, my ROMs were probably ripped back in 2000. I haven't bothered to update my uh, my NES or my Game Boy Color ROMs in like forever, so that might have been part of my problem. Uh, but again, you know, at least 85% of ROMs work, and very often if one of the versions of my ROM didn't work, I would try a different version and it would. So I'm going to blame my ROMs on this one. I'm going to guess it's uh, very close to the high 90s in compatibility. All right, I suppose that is all I really have to say on the menu portion of things. Let's go into some games. Ladies and gentlemen, meet Gun Knack, which runs just great on here. What else runs great? Well, I'm gonna tell you that Load Runner runs correctly. Uh, the controls, which are often reversed on these types of things, are not reversed they are in the correct position as far as being A and B. Uh, that said, uh, it's still vertically laid out, which makes it a little bit goofy, but it does seem to play fine after a few minutes. I adjust and it's okay. The other game that runs fine here that I test all the time is F1 Racer, which on many of these starts screwing up after the first turn. And no, nah, no, nah, no problem. It seems to run those fine. So. If you want to run either of those games, they both appear to run normally and correctly. Yay! This game is really great, by the way. It um, It's kind of expensive to get. I'm bidding on one on eBay right now because I would like an original copy of this. But come to find out, other people uh, seem to think this is a really great game too. And the prices are kind of driven up on it. If you get a chance to play it, definitely play it. All right, ladies and germs, meet Ice Climber, which is a game I probably should not be playing while talking, to be honest, but it is a pretty cool game, and I enjoy playing it on here. In fact, I've been playing it more on here than I think on anything. Kind of a Nintendo classic. All right, so let's real quick hit the menu button, and I want to show you that you can indeed save your games from here. Just hit A on the save. If there is a saved game already, you will get the option, hold on, let's go back. You'll get the option to load it. So if I select it, I can now read it. And there we go, and it just continues from where you're at. Pretty nice. If I want to exit this game, I'm going to long press that menu button, and then it goes back to the main menu. All right, let's go look at some Game Boy Color stuff. And here we have Top Gear Pocket 2. Pretty nice looking game. It looks way better on a small screen than it does on this big screen here. However, I did want to get a racing game in, so, you know, here we go. The Game Boy Color was a lot more powerful than I think most people give it credit for. It really could do some pretty decent stuff and had a fair amount of memory uh, for the time period it was built. You can do some amazing stuff here. Anyway, as you can see, it's running really well. Uh, note, if it's running a little bit slow for you, just switch the, uh, the stretch mode to off and it will run much better. I think this is one of the ones I had to do that with. But really, it's running it really, really well. Uh, as far as how Game Boy Color games run, it's pretty much like every one of these types of devices. It's a little hit or miss. Some of them run really well, some of them don't. I did find that it seems to do better than average, though. All right, let's go on to another game. Meet Galaga Destination Earth, which I believe is probably one of the gaudiest games ever <laughs> made for this system. Uh, it... It's okay as far as being fun to play. That said, I think I'm most annoyed by the fact that the background scrolls over and over again. It's like they didn't even bother to put in a uh, you know enough background variation 
to make it worth it. Look at it, it just keeps repeating the same thing over and over and over again. Kinda like one of my reviews, kinda. All right, maybe a lot like one of my reviews. All right, let's go on to Game Boy. And here we have Mr. Do for the Game Boy. It is a great version of Mr. Do. In fact, rivaling the uh, ColecoVision version. I mean, think about it. This isn't too long after the time of the original 8-bit game systems. That is open to debate. And it has games that are really technically, in a way, better than the ones that were running on the last generation full-blown consoles. I mean, this is just a really great game. If you've never played it, definitely spend some time with it. It's worth putting up with black and white for. Last week on Twitter, Vidja Gamer asked me what retro game I felt held up over time and I listed every stinking version of Bubble Bobble, and I think that's absolutely true of the Game Boy version, which I'm showing you here. That said, it's getting a little bit long in the tooth. I mean, definitely later on, there were games that did, oh, I can't believe I did that, that did more with the power of the Game Boy than this did, but the fact remains that it's still a really fun game to play, and if you wanna play it on the BitBoy, well, it runs just fine. Really good game. I, you know, I can't say enough good about the Bubble Bobble series. That said, I'm a big fan of collect em ups. So, if you like that kind of game, of course, this is a great one. All right, so I think it's time for the new BitBoy verdict. All right, so what's the verdict on the new BitBoy? Well, all in all, it delivers on the promises of the original BitBoy, and then maybe a little bit more. I mean, it's really, pretty darn nice to use. It feels good in the hand, the controls work well, it plays games great on all three systems. No, it's not 100% perfect, but it's definitely up there in the mid to high 90s, and I think that makes it among the best of this kind of handheld. Uh, I am going to complain a little bit about the fact that the buttons are still vertical. I wish they would have gone this way and this way with them instead of this way and this way. Uh, horizontal is the correct layout for pretty much every one of the Nintendo systems, so I don't know why they did it like that. It's a small complaint. It's pretty easy to adjust to, but note, if you're a person who really hates that kind of thing, you're you're not gonna be able to deal with it. Uh, another thing that kind of annoyed me was the light leak. I really don't like light leak at all, and there's quite a bit of it with this. Even though it feels really well constructed, the color or something in here allows the light to come through. Uh, but all in all, well, it does exactly what it says, and it does it well. So if you can deal with the very few negatives on it, for around 40 bucks, you know, you get what you pay for. And this gets a thumbs up. I wanna thank you very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more. I'm kinda of curious, because I've seen a lot of you guys that uh, watch my videos do have one of these now, and I'm kinda of curious what your thoughts on it are. I think I've been using like the $10 ones for so long. This one's, <laughs> this one's just a total blow away <laughs> to those. But anyway, uh, let me know. Thanks for watching as always. Bye.